It is Thursday, April 18th. Thirsty Thursday, some may say. I have my bourbon and tea right here without the bourbon, but it's still, I'm still thirsty. Tea works, right, Chris? It does. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, Buckeye Scoop has announced that Will Howard is the starting quarterback, and they have sources. So we will uh, discuss that. Is Will Howard the quarterback? What do I think is actually going on behind closed doors? We're going to discuss the quarterback situation after exiting spring. This is what this week is, right? Those real conversations with players where they talk about, you know, the head Ryan will talk to the quarterbacks with Chip Kelly. Brian Hartline will talk to the receivers about where you at. How was spring? How'd you do? And where do you need to get? Let's make a plan to get there. That's this time of year. So we're going to discuss that. We also have a Michigan spring game pending on Saturday. If you didn't know, tune in That's on right. Saturday to see if Alex Orgy can throw it back. I mean, throw. <laughs> We're going to fuck around and find out this weekend, aren't we? Bro, who will throw more passes? Alex Orgy or Will Howard and Devin Brown combined? <laughs> combined. Yeah. I bet you Alex Orgy throws more passes than both combined. Okay. If I had to if I had to guess. But we'll find out on Saturday. How's your week going, Chris? Good, man. I it, it honestly Tuesday, I was like, damn, this week's going slow as shit. But Tuesday, it's Tuesday. Tuesday, too. That's right. But now I feel like it's moving fast. The weather's been crazy. I'm like, I should have today, but Pat came in. And I started chopping it up with him. You know, I'm about to bring back my uh, my little river walks. Hey, there's nothing better. Uh, yeah, the river's right there. Usually I I, I go <laughs> for a little a little stroll rooski. Um Whoever said Chris wins the first menace freak off in the chat, you got one more. You got one more strike, bro. Then I'm gonna have someone in the wrench. Some, one of the one of the boys with the wrench get you. That's crazy. <laughs> there will be no menace freak offs. No menace freak offs. Yeah. Well, unless not, Pat hosts them. Not yet, at least. We might. We might get there one day. You never know. With this, this little. Uh, what do you mean? The freak society that is coming. Okay. Yeah. You never know. You never know. We might have a menace freak off Look, sometimes we, in the distant future. We, y- y'all got the freak side on that side. I I, I do want to give you major flowers, Zach. Pat, all time great hire. Every day I'm further and further in the Pat fan club. So what do you got? Something else now? Something new? new no, nah, dude. Out? I just like like usually like in radio, bro. I hated when this girl named JC Fox walked in the door every morning because it was like. I fucking hate this person. I hate them. <laughs> yeah. And like now, I, I, I'm happy when Pat walks in. It's just like, all right, game changer, Pat's in here. Usually I'm like, on the phone. I'm like, my guy Pat's here. I got to go. Click. <laughs> Project Pat. If you want to see hear more from Project Pat, he had a guest appearance on mm-hmm. OVE yesterday. I watched it. He did a great job. So shout out to Project Pat filling in for Torg when he was under the weather. Every day at three, go check him out. OVE coming today again. Really, really entertaining show. I love getting Sam and, and Torg's opinion and perspective on things. I also, Chris, unbeknownst to you, dropped the Michigan Color Rush mer- Color Rush merch on the storefront today or last night. So if you're a Michigan fan, want to get some maize and blue menace merch, it's on there. Got a cool, like a badass Navy uh, trucker hat. Got some white and black shirts with the logos in maize and blue. Go check it out, menace to merch.com. We also have the Ohio State Color Rush and just our normal show attire yep. and now we're moving forward with uh the store yeah. looks store looks good the store looks good and we're we, my next my next shirt we were talking about it before the show it, it's gonna say um it's always big letters fuck with a semicolon and everyone we say it's always fuck yeah. megan rapino and fuck brett mcmurphy we're just gonna list them all bro just, you gotta get the other two like it's got some deep cuts in there we're gonna make a list. Yeah, and we're gonna put the shirt out with a big ass demon on the back. So mm-hmm. look, look for that shirt coming soon. I certainly will be buying one of those. Can we throw Stefan Robinson on there, if you want to? Okay, and then Jeff Duncan. Oh, is that the Saints guy? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's definitely fuck Jeff Duncan <laughs> for sure. It's gonna be an elite list, elite mm-hmm. company. Desmond Howard will be on it. You know, we got to go through really the history of the show yeah. to figure out all the people. But in the comments. Drop who we need to put on that shirt. Yeah, who, who is it always fuck? Yeah, who are we fucking? No Diddy. Who are we fucking? No Diddy. On <laughs> on this shirt that we're going to put out over the weekend. But, Dunk, when I when I talked about oh, uh, Menace Lure, I forgot to mention Charity is part of Menace Lure, oh, too. Oh, yeah, Charity. Like, of all the stories, I'm just, I mean, I'm just thinking about the Menace, the Menace universe that's legend. ever evolving. Legend, right? the goat, the throat goat. Mm, Charity. I'm sorry, just the goat. Well, she's on Tinder. I'm sure she sucks a dick or two, right? 
I wouldn't know. I, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't know. But that, that she's an absolute legend. Our mm-hmm. Tinder, our Tinder profile, famous Damn charity. It. That's a crazy strip. She's watching this show. She just got caught in a, a dick sucker on her favorite podcast. No, I'm just saying. It's a good thing, though. I'm I, saying, I, is that a bad thing? No. Isn't no. Throat Goat like Hall of Fame? Yeah, but it's like. You just don't want to be called that? Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't. I don't know. I, I. I would not want to be, I don't know. I'm a guy. I'm straight. I'm a straight male. I would not want to be called that, but I'm a straight male. I, I understand. I mean, like, um, you know what? Let's uh get, get little man up here. <laughs> I just all jokes, charity, just yeah. a joke. We love you, charity. Let's get to it. We've already went off the rails. Lukey, let him know what time it is, Bubba. <laughs> Let's get to the show. Um, this one was great, bro. Jonte Porter, the one who, you know, was betting all that money, the NBA player that caught the lifetime ban, bro, his net winnings was only $21,000 betting on his own props. Think about that. How, like, I don't know if it's how bad or like, yeah, it's how, like, how dumb are you? I guess that you only, you, you bet. What is that? Total payouts was 76,000. So he lost. $55,000 $55,000 worth of bets on himself that he controlled. Like he, he gave up his whole career. Like you got to figure he could at least, I know he's not a great player, but what, one more year he would have been on a roster. Mm-hmm. What's league minimum. We got to be like 600. No, no, so, so he's made $2 million playing. Yeah. But so one more year was what? Another 500 K 400 K like at he, least he probably would have made another million dollars, whatever it is. Another, even if it's a hundred grand, 200 grand, he lost it all for, a bag of $21,965. Think about that. Mm-hmm. That is an all-time dumbass. Yeah. Just dumb as shit. Nah, dude. R- real real bad stuff. And I guess we're waiting on, because there is also that that separate account that they haven't been able to get all the all the numbers with that he was reportedly betting millions of dollars with. I hope he came up big on the other account, because this account, coming up $21,000 is a fucking disgrace, brother. It's a disgrace. <laughs> I mean, that's... If, if you're like a professional gambler, that's not very good. But he was betting on things he controlled. Mm-hmm. He was betting on his own stats. That he, I mean, what the, f- how? Also, like, like 21 bands, bro. Like, cool, got it. You'll never play basketball again. Like, it's over. Like, even if you weren't going to be in an NBA roster making a million dollars, you could have definitely went and hooped on China. Yeah. You could have definitely went and hooped in Europe somewhere, I would hope. Yeah. Like, you got to be so fucking for real, dog. That's wild. Twenty, basically twenty two thousand dollars in winnings, and mm. cost his whole career. Yeah, what did it cost you? <laughs> At what cost? <laughs> Everything. I have a very specific set of skills. Yeah, <laughs> I will find you. I will bet on myself, and I will fuck it up. It's gonna come out that he had the under on that one that he made the bank shot three <laughs> for under three. He's that's hilarious. That he lost a milli. Absolutely hilarious. Lost a milli. Um, so a couple things happened, bro. Did you see that? I think it was like what Greg Doyle or whatever, dude. C- kind of low key hitting on Caitlin Clark at her introductory oh, press oh, conference. Yeah. Fucking creepy as hell. Yeah, and then like the weird apology. I didn't see the apology. I just he saw like, him like, like what the fuck? Like, like this thing to her family. He's like, as long as you do that to me, everything will be okay. Like you fucking creepy motherfucker. Yeah, bro. The apology was even immediate yorny jail. Yeah, bro. Immediately. Remember, I talked to you about like that list that some people just should be on. Not a criminal list, but just that list. Yeah, like the guy from CNN that jerked off on a Zoom call. Yeah, this that guy that was hitting on Caitlin Clark in her introductory press conference. Like, there's a bunch of them uh, in in media that just it's the Yorny Hall of Fame. Oh, the chat is saying that Doyle has history with you and Urban. Yeah, I can't remember. I I, I recognize the name. Let's let's look it up. I guess Juck, Juck said uh, from Juck on Buck. Shout out to his podcast. He played the clip of him trying to get Urban fired with you. Was he part of that Brett McMurphy group? Oh, was he the, was I he mean, the wingman? Uh, let's see. You just love Greg Doyle, Zach Smith. Yeah, just see what he had to say. Huh. God, he is a douchey looking guy, too. Let's see what we got. I'm I'm really intrigued now. Yeah, me too. See, you have a, a, usually a pretty good memory with this kind of thing. Yeah, when I look it up, they all talk about Chris Doyle, urban hiring Chris Doyle, the racist from Iowa. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. That's funny. That's that's not funny. That's interesting. And now he's working WNBA basketball and, um, you know, literally things are about to blow up, right? Like it's about to hit all time stride for WNBA basketball. It's going to yeah. really move the needle and kind of has a chance to be what the 90s were for NBA basketball and the WNBA. And the first thing you want to do with the number one overall pick is be weird to her on a press conference setting. Absolutely. Here, here it is. Ready? 
He tweeted on November 4th of this past year, Ohio State fans celebrating Michigan's cheating scandal have sacrificed the moral high ground by making a celebrity of disgraced ex-OSU assistant, and then he tagged me, who was fired after allegations, allegations of domestic violence in 2018, and it's trolling Michigan now. Sit down, Zach. Shut up, OSU fans. So I replied. I said, shut the fuck up, Greg, with three Gs. Allegations is the right word. Where is the disgrace? You call yourself a reporter on brand, I guess. Cue baseless articles being tagged and an arrest that didn't that did happen for something completely irrelevant to DV or anything disgraceful. Greg with three G's. So I, I I knew I recognized that name. But how's it going, Greg? You're a disgraced fucking reporter who hit on Caitlin Clark in her introductory press conference with your little dick out. How's it going, buddy? Fuck Greg Doyle. I would be so embarrassed if I was your child. Um, yeah, new Greg, Greg, not, not, not dude, not, not good dude. Um, his apology was terrible. He like, he went to like anger and then denial or some shit on his thing. And he typed those things out. It was very, <laughs> it was very odd. Um, what a strange man. Um, but something about telling somebody shut the fuck up. And then like, with like a little, like, like slight insult right after. So crazy, bro. Yeah. Like shut the fuck up, Greg with three G's, like shut your hoe ass up, make some drums. Like, like saying that, like talking to someone like they, our little bro is crazy. But, like, uh, drop the second G, you fucking douche. Greg is spelled G R E G. You had another G, it's because you're g -g 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 gay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, uh, so shout out Kayla Clark, who was looking good in her uniform, bro. Look, Indiana looks good hey, on her. Looks good on her. Looks good. Like, you know, it's Michigan colors, menace colors, but we, uh, we're rocking with Kayla Clark on, um, on this one. I'm excited for her, bro. Do you think she could be the second player ever to win MVP and Rookie of the Year in the same year in the WNBA? Oh, absolutely. What do you mean? The hype train is real. Mm -hmm. She's got to play well, obviously. But, yeah, if she if she plays well, she's going to win MVP and Rookie of the Year. Yeah, just, just, just for the, I mean, marketing of it. If, if they're smart. If they're smart, she's going to fucking win everything. They're going to rig the game. She's going to win the title. Like, they're going to make her the Michael Jordan of women's basketball which would potentially save their sport. The last WNBA player to do it was uh, Candace Parker, I believe. Who's a, a gangster goat. Yeah, and there and there you go with your little, uh, there's your WNBA facts for the day. <laughs> um, this is great. Pat, did you grab this throw it on screen? This is awesome. You know, obviously draft season's coming up. This was a, a poll that started five years ago, uh. and it was open for, I think, 24 hours. <laughs> Phenomenal. This was such a great find. Fast forward five years. Will Ryan Pace regret drafting Mitch Trubisky over Pat Mahomes and Deshaun Watson? 82% of people said no. <laughs> Confirming that 82% of this country are fucking idiots. Dog, that is insane. Or just 82% of Bears fans, because that was the only Bears site that was like, what the fuck are we doing? Drafting Mitch Trubisky over Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes is a death sentence for this team. Yeah, It really is. And it's crazy because they fucking made the playoffs with them. Yeah. Like, they made the playoffs with them. It's it's kind of like how, you know, the Steelers made the playoffs with Kenny Pickett. It's like you're a well-put-together team. Your quarterback <laughs> play has been a whole bucket of mid, but you're good enough to make the playoffs. Zach, I'm not going to lie. If I read you a J.J., uh, J.J. McCarthy draft analysis and then also read you a Mitch Trubisky one and didn't tell you which one was which, I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference. No, probably not. But this happens every year, right? Mm -hmm. Every year there's a quarterback like this who we think is, you know, he's a good, good player, but not an NFL starting quarterback. And we J.J. Has, is a complete unknown, just like Mitch Trubisky was a complete unknown, just like Zach Wilson was a complete unknown, Trey Lance. And, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And every now and then you you – you get a, a star, right? Yeah. In this year's draft class, who has the potential to be this year's Mitch Trubisky? Well, I think when you talk about draft slotting, it's mm -hmm. it's got to be J.J. McCarthy, right? Right. I, I think and, and Caleb Williams, too. Caleb Williams, I, I, I would inflate him a little bit. He was, he's going to be the number one overall pick. So he's more has a chance to be Jamarcus Russell, right? Bigger bust because he's a higher pick. But it's got I mean, it's got to be J.J. It has to be because Michael Penix Jr. and Bo Nix are going to be down in the draft, so they don't really fit the bill. I think both of them have a, a decent bust percentage chance. Um, the two, the one guy that I think is a home run in this draft is Drake May. I really do. Dog, me too, and I'm starting to have my doubts, bro, like as we get closer and closer to the draft because he, I, everything I've seen and read and like, and I and I don't break down – the the stat the, the film like you but I do look at like the, the the numbers like what do you do against blitz what are you doing against that what are you doing against this and like compare that to like past kind of draft things you yeah. look at the size speed all that he looks the part and then I hear guys who I really respect talk about well 
you know, it's the ACC. Mm-hmm. He's has he's only played I think two NFL corners. Mm-hmm. Gets a little bit of erratic at times. Mm-hmm. Does that freak you out at all? Because I to me, he's Justin Herbert at the minimum. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just the more I have dove into this draft, the quarterbacks in this draft. I think Drake May is the best candidate to be a franchise quarterback. And my question I'm going to throw at you first is, who has the second best chance to be a franchise quarterback? Shit. Aha. Uh-huh. Great question. K- Caleb Williams. And it, this is new for mm-hmm. me because mm-hmm. I like Jane Daniels a lot. I have a lot of concern, given the width of his hips, that he's going to get hurt because he's slender and he takes a little bit too many shots for me to feel comfortable with. I watched a, a, like someone break down, like Jane Daniels, all worldly, has every tool you would want. But one of the issues is, unlike a guy like Lamar Jackson, who his whole college career avoided some of the big hits, Jaden Daniels seems to absorb and take them. And that concerns me, so I'll go Caleb Williams for that take. And because I think Caleb's going to be the number one overall pick, I think the Bears are good enough around him to give him the second best chance to be a... So you're picking a quarterback that in his final six games uh, of his college uh, career went one and five. Yeah, He lost five of his last six games and save me on the defense. Scored 20 points against Notre Dame, looked fucking atrocious. 27 points against Oregon, did not play well. 20 points against UCLA, did not play well. UCLA, 20 points. I... Dog, that was a great I, fucking setup of backdoor trap. It's like it, we're playing, it was, we're, but, we're but playing I, Yu-Gi-Oh! No, but honestly, my trap card. I didn't think you were going to go there. I thought you were going to surefire Jaden Daniels, and my next question was going to be, who has the third best chance mm. to be a franchise quarterback? Because I think it's J.J. McCarthy. Ooh. Over- I'm not saying he's going to be, but I think he has a better chance than Caleb Williams. He has a better chance than Michael Penix and a better chance than Bo Nix. See, I guess I worry about him because I think he's got the highest bust potential out of all the guys. But does he also have the highest boom potential? I don't think he has the highest boom potential. See, I do. I have. I have. You think him. he has higher boom potential than Jaden Daniels? No, no, no. I have Jaden Daniels too. Okay, this okay. Is, this so is for QB three. So you think he has higher boom potential than Caleb Williams? Yes, I think there's a higher percentage Ooh. chance that he can be a franchise quarterback than Caleb Williams. And is that Sim- similar bust percentage? The above the shoulder stuff. Yeah, and I just okay. think the intangibles. His mentality, I think he has skill. I think he has uh, the, the the fundamentals. I Granted, I know we've never seen him throw 45 passes. We've seen Caleb Williams do that 8 million times. I think the bust potential is similar to Caleb Williams, but the boom potential is a little bit higher. Or maybe not even boom. Just like chance, that, like, yeah, like, chance like, that he is a franchise quarterback, like a starting quarterback in the NFL. In the playoffs. Football. Like starting quarterback in the playoffs sure. is, is, I think, my my sure where, where I would go. Hmm. Do you think he has a higher percentage of – being that starting quarterback in the playoffs than a guy like Michael Penix. That's tough Penix, for me because I Penix saw T- can do freaky shit with the football. I just don't like that as the criteria. I saw Tim Tebow start a game in the playoffs. You, you know did, what I mean? Like, you did. That's fair. yeah, That's I think fair. I think any of them could be a starting quarterback on the right team. Fuck, Kenny Pickett was. You know what I mean? Yeah, my I, bad. And that was that was a poor. Uh, bar. Let's put it this way. I think when I do this, I say, all right, who will be a starting quarterback at a team at, at a NFL team for five years? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we've seen all the like a shitload of quarterbacks start here and there for a year or two, for a couple games, maybe one year, take them to the playoffs and lose. Like I've seen a lot of shitty quarterbacks do that. I'm talking five, six years is is the we'll make it to a second contract. Okay, that's good. Second contract as, as a starter, I yeah, it's important. Hmm, like he Caleb Williams completed 56 percent of his passes against Oregon, only threw for one touchdown. His last two games, his stat line was two touchdown passes and one interception combined. But also, like, if you look at J.J.'s stat line there near the end, was also shit without Con. Yeah, but now. I guess now, attempted, di- different offense, different offense. Uh, yeah, different he attempted offense. 34 passes against Oregon, 42 against UCLA. And he actually didn't play terrible against UCLA, but I, I just don't – I think he has a real bus per, high bus percentage. So like, J.J. McCarthy just freaks me out, man. I, and I think maybe because like, – Oh, likewise. Me too. Like when I look at all kind of the, the sports data stuff, the sports data equivalents, it's like there's not enough data on J.J. McCarthy to like even hit some of the minimums on this last season. And so I think to myself, damn, like I don't know. I so that, that's my question for the chat as, as we're going to kick it to commercial here. It's not 
who should get drafted where. It's not because, you know, you got to take into account, like, what's the chance he's not good enough and what's the chance he is, right? You got to combine both. I, I'm not talking about bus percentage. I'm saying, what is what are the odds? In order, who would you draft? I want one through four. What quarterback has the best percentage chance to be a starting quarterback in the NFL for five years? One through four. Mm. That's that's what I want to know. That's a great fucking question. It's a so for question. me, it's Drake May, Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, and then that fourth one is probably Caleb Williams. And then you probably go Penix. Then Penix. Uh, yeah, Penix and Bo Nix probably. There's some love for Rattler out there. People think that Rattler played it. Fuck uh, Rattler. Okay. Let's, <laughs> Pat, that's your. <laughs> oh, Spencer Rattler. I can't, I can't get behind that one. I just can't. I, I can't. But we'll be right back after this. Menace Army, I've told you a hundred times already. The best sheets I've ever owned, ever used. They're sexy. They're comfortable. And the best part is they're temperature controlling, self-cooling. These are miracle-made sheets. Did you know that the temperature at night can have one of the greatest impacts on your sleep, sleep quality? If you wake up too hot or too cold, I highly recommend you check out Miracle Made's bed sheets inspired by NASA. Miracle Made uses silver-infused fabrics and makes temperature-regulating bedding so you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. They're self-cleaning. Comfort and quality are through the roof. They're designed for your skin. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. All you have to do is go to trymiracle.com slash menace, trymiracle.com slash menace to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whatever you're buying from them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code menace at checkout, you'll get three free towels and an extra 20% off. So upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash menace and use code menace to came to claim your free three towel piece set and save over 40% off. TryMiracle.com slash menace. Treat yourself, Menace Army. Treat yourself. They're the best sheets I've ever owned. As I said, that is not bullshit. I'm not selling you. They really are that fucking good. Guys, Zach bought a whole farm and said uh, during the commercial <laughs> break. I just got a text, a Venmo request from my farmer. I got a cow coming, baby. Clear out the freezer, Justine. We got a cow coming. He said, I wonder if we have enough freezer space. Eat more chicken. Bro, just ordered a cow. I really am worried. I don't I because I have a garage freezer and we can empty it out. There's nothing in there I need, but I don't know how much a quarter. It's only a quarter of a cow. I think it was uh 850 bucks. I don't know how nice. much a quarter of a cow is. I'm really nervous. I might have to buy a freezer. Bro, also, like, I'm trying to buy a quarter of a cow. Who'd you buy it from? I'll give you her name. Okay. She and she just she's a farmer just a little bit outside Columbus. They just dr dr drop it off. I don't know. I don't know that yet. I might have to go pick it up. Hopefully it's already been butchered. I don't want to meet yeah, it. Yeah, you don't want to meet it. You want no. just want the meat from it. Yes, I just want I just want them to give me the meat like the grocery store does. I don't want to see the cow. No diddy. Um, question: Who would you rather draft, Jordan Travis, Spencer Rowler? Jordan Travis. Oh, um, Jordan Travis or Bo Nix? Well, Jordan Travis. Uh, well, I can't go any higher because it's like Jordan Travis or Michael Penix. Michael Penix. Got it. That's the cutoff. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think Jordan Travis is I. I don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he's going to be an NFL starting quarterback for five years, but I think he's he's worth a pick in the second or third round, and I think he has a chance. Bro, Jordan Travis has some shit to him, dog. We were calling him tight window Travis last year. At I, some I just point, like yeah, he was he, threatening some fucking needles for. I'm like, damn, like I haven't seen a lot of guys in this man. this year make that throw. He didn't really no. get the hype or the media behind him. He is yeah, back throwing a football too. Yeah, and he's he's a so the injury concern concerns you a little bit, right? But he's also a really good athlete that doesn't rely on his athleticism like Jaden Daniels, right? I think I think he's got a real chance. Well, you know what you know that sounds like, right? And I, you know, caliber of of draft prospect. Russell Wilson was a third or fourth rounder. Mm -hmm. Good athlete, didn't rely on his athleticism, made a lot of tight window throws. Um the Mr. Incredible shit was obviously obviously super corny. Jordan Travis I don't think has that. No, I think he's 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 Russell Wilson without the, you know, getting cucked. <laughs> I thought you were going to say less corny, but you know. Yeah, less corny. Same thing. Cool. Yeah, yeah. A whole lot of that. No, that's that's general. I will ask more draft questions, Zach, but I do want to get some uh, questions from the Menace Army Super Let's chatters. go, Army. Bring it on. Gorky, thanks for the two. Member Gorky, Chris woke up with hate for his past. Gotta love it. What do I hate in my past? I don't know what that was referencing. What do I, what do I hate? Gorky, let me know. I don't think I hate. I really don't hate anybody. Um, Kevin, I've seen Simba uh, freestyle on one of uh, on the LA Leakers. That was 
elite. Um, TJ, thank you for becoming a member. What a guy. Good shit. Become a member, official member of the Army. It's just a way to support the show. And it just really, I guess, shows your commitment to the show. You get a custom Avi. You get custom emojis. And we're building out. We're, we're planning this summer on doing maybe like a members-only bonus episode we're gonna we're gonna bring some more shit to it to really ramp up uh subscriptions we might do it sooner than later uh probably i'm, I'm thinking like end of april early may we'll do something fun you know what we should do chris we should get tony alfred on and make it a members exclusive that would have been re that's really cool i did not know you were gonna i thought it was gonna be you were gonna talk about like a hot tub stream that's what yeah, they, oh that too that's, that's yeah we'll get justine true. and ainsley in a hot tub and just let them talk to you for an hour members only yeah, but i do like the tony alfred i mean if you guys do like a chalk talk or anything just like talk about stories or just kind of your time together i would yeah. absolutely subscribe to that yeah we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it b man member what a legend thank you welcome to the gang gorky thanks for the canadian too uh greg doyle having a job for years has been a mystery for years <laughs> wordplay greg with three g yeah three I, g's i mean i hope he gets fired that'd be like honest. you having two s's chris sounds sassy <laughs> it does it sounds zesty <laughs> blue member blue thanks for the five grab some michigan menace merch navy hat is I'm telling you, fire. the navy hat is really fucking cool i like the white hat too yeah we need more people to post the merch they get on twitter yeah right do now. that hashtag menace and and show off your merch we saw a bunch of it at the live show so mm -hmm. I, and shit i'm chris is just pumping orders through i see our bank account balance go down and then up and then down and then up it's like a fucking roller coaster. You know what I believe in? Roller coaster. Shout out Cedar Point. <laughs> That's what we should do for some menace bonding. I want to see how you you all react on a roller coaster. I'm gonna tell you right now, Chris. We, if we ever make it make the menace tour down to Florida, we need to go to SeaWorld. And that that sounds fucked up, but yeah. some of the best roller coasters I've ever been on. They have one that you it, you sit in it, and then right before it goes, it like suspends you, and you're like flying like Superman. It's it was ask ask Cam and Quinn. I'll, I'll, some of the best shit I've ever been on. Hmm. Okay. I'm I'm with it. But can we do the thing where we like drink a lot beforehand and see who has the strongest stomach? I might piss myself if I drink too much and go on one of those. <laughs> Who's got the most control? <laughs> <laughs> Just let it fly all over SeaWorld. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not the dolphins. Not the dolphins. <laughs> Podcast host throws up <laughs> in the main tank. Not flipper. <laughs> flipper covered in vomit. <laughs> Peter would be on your ass like crazy. Hey, bring it on. Fuck Peter. That's another one. It's always <laughs> fuck Peter on the show. And fuck stuff on Robinson. Keel, thanks for the two. Member Keel. Bold of you to assume Doyle's reproduced. Yeah, he probably has never fucked a woman. Yeah. You're probably right. What a fucking show today. It's on bullshit. And I'm here for it. Paul Moss, thanks for the 10. Member Paul. Not going to lie. Thanking the Facebook gods for not allowing football. football. Facebook. <laughs> this is a football show, Chris. My fault, OG. Football guys are not allowing Pat Mahomes to go to the Bears. They have ruined more QBs than Diddy. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> they sleeping on Watson with the Browns. Boy, about to ball. Zach Smith, your QB order is on point. Well, you know, it's, it, hindsight will, will either make me right or wrong, as it, yeah. as it always does. I, I'm surprised you have more faith in JJ than you do, Caleb. I don't know, man. I, I it, it's for the me, above the shoulder stuff, right? Is that it, it's what it just, is? I, I think I think Caleb has has um, higher talent ceiling, but JJ just has the intangibles I look for, mm -hmm. and Caleb has the fucking opposite of everything I look for in the quarterback off the field. Yeah, like just I, I I can't. I just don't see a franchise quarterback when I watch him. I guess. Can you think about a time where like being a diva ruined a uber talented quarterback? um jim mcmahon okay <laughs> yeah i mean there i guess i'm thinking i'm thinking about like the last 10 because that's kind of when i started yeah, following I mean, really deep, I'd, I'd really have to think about it um because like obviously like vince young had like the above the shoulder issues but that was more than 10 years ago and he was a good quarterback for a little bit then mm -hmm. kind of derailed i guess it depends on like how uber talented you believe uh caleb williams is i think he's very talented okay and i just i just can't remember a, like a an uber uber I mean, talented kyler murray yeah Ky kyler murray but yeah, maybe not as much diva as it is work ethic, more a Jamarcus Russell Russell oh. issue. And he and he was good, and he got a second contract. Yeah, he did. Just takes a while usually for that shit to set in, right? Right. <laughs> well, when you spend that high of a draft capital, it takes that long for the team to admit it. Yeah. Because then you have to admit we fucked up. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of ego in that. Well, and, and he was good. He was good yeah, he until the second contract. Yeah, he wasn't terrible. Like, Kyler wasn't just an immediate. He wasn't fucking Trey Lance or Zach Wilson. No, or, I think he threw. Didn't he throw for 4K? Because I usually the, the ego stuff ruins you before you yeah. get to the, to the. Like, I think the ego stuff may have ruined Zach Wilson <laughs> before he got there. But I don't know. I also have my, I think there's high bust potential in Caleb Williams too. Yeah. Cause I think he plays a little bit too much off schedule for my liking. Yeah. Reminds me of just like thick, tall Bryce young, who I would take CJ Stroud over. And I, that's who, uh, that's why I would go Drake may over him mm-hmm. personally. Elks. Thanks. Thank you for the two shout out LaShawn. He's working someone new today. Again, don't have the context, but yeah. shout out LaShawn. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? What if I don't like LaShawn? Yeah. Like give us some, idea what we're talking about elks right <laughs> carson thanks for the 10 every time i watch a throwback game i see zach on the sideline i just wonder what he was saying in the moment who was the scariest player with the most attitude you coached um i don't that's that's going to be two different players um probably the player with the most attitude was dontre wilson and not in a bad way like he wasn't You're it, talking like sassy attitude yeah like sassiness okay. like and i it's it's not that he really was ever disrespectful to me or or, you know, I didn't like coaching him, but he had he had some attitude. Or Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel had some attitude to him. Mm. Now, the scariest player I've ever coached. I don't know. I don't know. I don't can't think of a player that was scary. I mean, Aaron, like, what Aaron do you mean Hernandez, by scary? Aaron Hernandez and Percy Arvin. I can't think of them. Yeah, I guess probably Aaron Hernandez probably wasn't scary at that time. Well, not, not like I wasn't you. scared of him. Yeah. I guess with hindsight, fuck, I should have been terrified. <laughs> but I also I, I, I mean, probably Percy just because he could snap at the drop of a hat. Bro, Percy punching dude from the Seahawks, breaking his jaw, and then housing the kickoff. But, off. like, also, like, I knew that about Percy. So, mm-hmm. guess what I'm not doing? Putting myself in a situation where he might snap on me. Yeah. But that's a little scary, I guess. You, do you think Ryan Day would recruit Percy Harvin today if Percy dude, was available? Dude, everyone in the world would recruit Percy Harvin. Everyone. Really? I, I guess I just think about, like, the, like the, the belief that, like, Ryan Day, if a player has too many screws loose, not going for it. Yeah, but he was that fucking good. Just throw on his high school highlights. Was he I the mean, number one player in the country? Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess I didn't realize that. Oh, my God. Just put on his highlights. The, no, but, the but, most absurd highlight tape maybe I've ever seen. Percy Harvin. Fucking wild. Uh, I guess I guess maybe that was too far. I think he for... scored. It, it. The highlight tape felt like he scored every time he touched the ball. And he was. it was like he was playing with, in a youth football league. Like, he was faster and more explosive than everyone in the entire Norfolk, Virginia Beach area. Number two player in the country. Do you want to guess who number one was? Oh, no. I don't know. Andre Smith. Oh, the tackle. Mm-hmm. Went to Bama, right? Yep, went yeah. to Bama. That's interesting. Percy Harvin. I just, Sometimes I just wonder if, if Ron Day would recruit the screws loose guys. I hope so. We need a couple <laughs> screw loose guys in the Buckeye program. We were talking about the quarterback room. They got too many screws in. Yeah. One of the screws needs to break. Right. Way, way too many screws in. Mm-hmm. Um, Rod, thanks for the five. Zach, I would love to hear your takes on the Cam Newton vids I sent you. Do you think he deserves a ring from the 2018? Um, sure. I, 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 did, I didn't see the videos you sent me, though. Did you text them to me or DM them? I'll, I'll check them out after the show. Um, yeah, I mean, does he deserve the ring? A ring is, a, is, a, is, is not a right. You don't have a right to a championship ring. So, honestly, no. The stolen laptop, the shit he did, like, that's that's what happens, right? You got kicked out of school, like, and he didn't play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would have given bro a ring. I mean, I like Cam, so yeah, I, I'll, I'll give it to him. But I'm just saying, like, r- getting a ring, getting gold pants, getting those things that is a that that privilege. is a privilege. Like, yeah. you have to earn that, and you have to uphold certain values to to be given that gift. Yeah. Also, like looking back, I, you know, I don't really care because he went and got his own ring. And his own Heisman. Yeah. And his own number one overall pick and a lot of money. So, Emily, or girl, thanks for the five. You choose your cuts of meat, then go pick it up. I also have a four yes. dozen eggs. I need, need it. I'll swing by your house on the way to get the uh, to get the cow. Okay. So, I'll get I'll get the eggs and a cow. We should start a menace farm, dog. Dude, I just I just want. With grocery stores getting so expensive, bro. I, like, I want to be like Emily. Like, I, I'm, that's my dream. You want to know my dream? Or like Heartline. Heartline's got it. He's got a nice piece yeah. of property. He's got a fucking chicken coop. Like, I want that. I want to have 10 acres, a fucking barn, a pool barn where I, my kids can go play baseball or whatever the fuck they want. And I want a chicken coop. 
and I want Justine to take care of them chickens. She will <laughs> fucking murder me. <laughs> You're going to come home one day and Luke's going to have one of those things by the neck running around with it. Yep. Shout out to shout out to our guy, Luke. Uh, Future Black, you're a member. Love it. Love it. <coughs> Gorky, thanks for the two. Oh, just like the uh, commitment to menace. I just like the commitment to menace support you have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was tripping on my past. Just because y'all don't understand, bro. One time, Zach, on, on the air, I had a trivia question for the listeners to answer. Yeah. Looked it up, vetted it, all that for a giveaway. The listener got the answer right, and we're still on air, and this girl starts to argue with me about that's not the valid answer. And it's about fucking avocados, dog. It's like, like avocados. And she's just arguing with me, trying to, like, make the competition invalid. I cut the mics off, and I was like, just go the fuck home. <laughs> like, nobody fucking likes you. And nobody cares. It's avocados. It's, Let the fucking listener win. It's avocados. And, and all I said was, like, I'm sure most avocados taste the same because there's, like, over 500 types of avocados. <laughs> like, I'm sure they, most of them taste probably pretty similar. <laughs> when the fuck are you? About you? It. it's like our live show trivia they don't even get the question right half the time we just give them the gift card that's what i'm saying i just gave this person a pair of tickets you want to argue avocados and you didn't want to get mad at me when i tell you to go the fuck home and so i didn't turn our microphone on for the next hour it was just <laughs> off so i run the board i was sitting there like let me chill out i'm about to go on a tangent t smitty <laughs> thanks for the 10 the pat should pay should pray may is there at number three and sit him what's unsaid is not many nfl coaches can coach and develop a QB. Andy Reid and the Packers can develop the QB. The Bears never developed the QB. Never. I think in today's era of, of NFL football, there's so much pressure to start a guy right away when if they're drafted with a top 10 pick. Mm -hmm. So much pressure right away. And because these coaches are on a clock that's different than the GM's clock. So we got to start him, get him ready, and go play him. Yeah. I do think if we're talking about quarterback development, I do think the Bills deserve a lot of credit for developing Josh Allen. Because he was taken in the top 10. And, and obviously with Dable there, they were able to kind of groom him in. As a guy that was really raw, lots of talent, he got developed uh, pretty well as well. But most guys, your top 10 pick, you got to go now and with the window, right? Yeah. We have to win a Super Bowl with you on your rookie deal still. We cannot afford I think, for you to I, wait. I think th absolutely valid. I think that rookie year needs to be more fragile than the NFL often treats it for mm. high draft picks. Mm -hmm. Just that year. Year two. Time to go. Yep. Maybe even mid-year one. But game one, year one, how often does that work out? C.J. Stroud, kind of Joe Burrow, but not really. He got fucking annihilated his whole rookie yeah, year. That, that O-line was like Yeah, like, like why are we sacrificing these kids first year in the NFL just to appease the fucking GM who picked him at number two? It's just stupid. Well, and if you look at the teams who get it right, the Ravens got Lamar Jackson well, later in the first round. They could afford right. to sit him because the roster was good and they had a guy there. I mean, shit, the Chiefs traded up. They had a playoff roster already out. They could afford for Alex Smith. They could win with Pat Mahomes on the bench still. Yeah. And so. keep, keep in mind, I mean, there's there's a reason the draft order is the draft order. Mm -hmm. Those teams that draft up high, they're really shitty organizations. Right. They're really bad teams. And, and how do you get there? By making bad decisions. Right. So, like, they continue to make bad decisions. There's a reason why. A lot of these teams picking the top 10 every fucking year. It's the circle of life. It is. Um, Gapist, that's a crazy name. Thanks for the five. Zach, you're pretty high on Caleb last spring. What changed in the last year was just the way his team finished, specific performances, <laughs> or gayness? I no, I it's watch more tape. It was because his 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 ceiling, his his uh talent ceiling is still incredibly high. I just thought this past year he played like dog shit against good defenses. And then you doubled down and then they, they finished one and five. I mean, he changed my mind on the field. And then that motherfucker solidified my changing of mind with his off the field behavior. I don't think that that is a franchise quarterback personality wise, intangible wise. Like he, I thought his Heisman year, he was incredible. And I, I, I thought he would continue that way. Through this past year, I even talked about he could be the first two-time Heisman winner. That's how well he played in 2022, and I didn't see all the off-the-field shit. The painted nails thing, I was like, oh, that's kind of, like, I look past it because his mom was a nail tech, and, like, it was a cool little mother-son moment, but the way he operated in 2023, I'm all the way the fuck out. And also, at times, I felt like he was trying to play hero ball too much, and he wasn't as good from the pocket as we heard he was doing, mm -hmm. right? Because those interceptions against Notre Dame were entirely on him, I felt like. And there were times where he wouldn't take your single because he was trying to hit a home run every time, and I think that ended up hurting his team. It felt like he was almost chasing a two-time Heisman. 
if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the, what, what good defenses did he play? Notre Dame was the Notre Dame's the best defense he played. He fucking threw for 199 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. Huge red flag. Yeah. Oregon, 55% completion percentage, one touchdown. Like, I just, I didn't think he showed up against good defenses. Utah, great defense. 234 passing attempts, 256 yards, zero touchdowns in the whole game. Like, he just didn't show up against good defenses. That's real. Zach, want to get a quick word from us? Let's do it. A little narcissistic read. Listen to me for a minute. We'll be right back after this. All right, Menace Army, when we don't have ads, we just self-promote. They're kind of narcissistic, I guess. But if you love the show, you love the platform, you love the growth, where we're going, here's a great way for you to support us. Menace2merch.com. The number two. We have like 10 or 12 items on there right, right now. The rebrand. You see the shirt I'm wearing. Kind of the Menace Superman shirt. It's got the down the spine. It's got Menace to Sports, um, which you can see on the website. But um, we priced everything fairly low. This is more about promotion and kind of getting you guys to rep our brand across the country. So we got a, we got female gear. We got a, bath- a one-piece bathing suit. Uh, don't I actually need to take the two-piece off. It's fucking awful. We got a sample, so don't order that. But we're, we're quality control right now. We got hoodies. We got cutoff shirts. We got workout shirts. This is a fitness shirt. It's outstanding. And I'm going to add more stuff this week. So there might be about 20 items. Um, takes a couple weeks to get to you, but go go support us. Go to menacetomerch.com and rock the brand. Rock the brand. And we got the Michigan uh, Color Rush stuff on there. Navy hat, sweet. I got it's 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 going. Yeah, but you know we got breaking news from our guy Project Pat Haley Van Lith is joining TCU's women's basketball team. Oh shit, the hottest basketball team in, in women in college basketball. Yeah, the uh, the one Kavner twin is there right now, and the other one just announced that she is coming back to college basketball. That'd be a dope starting five. You dig? I'll watch. <laughs> <laughs> Will they have better ratings than Kayla Clark? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I got some good news for your Browns, Zach. Um, Andrew Berry said that Nick Chubb began running on land again. He's working on rehab to get back from that knee. It's going to – it sounds like he'll be ready. That's from from my homegirl, Cameron Justice, who covers the Browns in Cleveland. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Praying for a, for a full, speedy recovery for Nick Chubb. What it's, I mean, easily one of my favorite players in the NFL. He should just – mouth shut, fucking grinder, great player. Like, just really hope he gets back. I, As a Browns fan, I really hope he gets back. Bro, Nick Chubb's an alien, bro, because his career should have ended three knee injuries ago. Yeah, like, the shit that happens happened to his knee. I'm convinced that that bro is a, a Viltramite, bro. Like, he's got <laughs> some some shit in his knee because it does not make sense. Bro, just, just watch him squat. Right. But I'm saying, like, Zach, the way he got hit at Georgia, he should have never ran the ball again. That then the is. way he got hit there and the way his knee fucking hit the wiggle <laughs> yeah. looked like a cooked noodle in it. Bro, he should have ne- He's They're telling me. It's the off season. He's running again, bro. Freak. Be the fuck for real, dog. Freak. No way, dog. I've seen. I mean, like fucking Todd Gurley didn't have this kind of knee injury, and that boy's knees were shot by the time he hit thirty. Yeah. Like, like I don't know, genetic lottery, bro. And I'm so happy for Nick Chubb because all accounts, hard like the Kawhi Leonard almost of the NFL. Yeah, just hard worker, keeps his mouth shut. You never hear about him off the field. Like one of my favorite players in the NFL. And like. I remember his mic'd up game was one of my favorites. Yeah. Literally, not a word. <laughs> <It's> like, just <laughs> <laughs> you mic'd up the quiet kid. Yeah, you might the <laughs> fuck? You mic'd them up. You just hear fire the, the marketing person. You just hear pads hitting. But the, yeah. the Browns of media did a funny thing. They they put uh they said Nick Chubb had a lot to say today. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just fucking him grunting. Um JK Dobbins signing a one year deal with the Chargers. I like this move for all parties. Uh, except for him, he's got to play for Harbaugh. Yeah, <laughs> horrible. J.K., I, I'm, I'm happy for him. I, hope, I, I really hope he comes back from this injury and is an effective NFL running back. Love the kid. Great kid. Phenomenal kid. Um, kind of sucks for him that he has to play for Harbaugh, but not really, right? I say, isn't it brilliant? I mean, isn't it, it's a great move? I mean, it's a great move, but just, you know, that that whole – yeah, like fuck Ohio home. State, Michigan deal. I mean, right. I mean, Joey Bosa's there too, so yeah. it's like, I mean, they gotta come. They combine. They never lost to. They never lost to Jim. So, no, they didn't. So whatever shit Jim wants to talk, you you never beat us. Yeah, right. Fuck you, me. If I'm J.K. and Joey, I'm wearing my gold pants every fucking day. I, I might break them out after I score a touchdown. And right. for J.K., this is why this is brilliant. He's betting on himself. He thinks he's going to be healthy. It's a one year deal mm-hmm. on an offense that is going to ground and pound. But they also have quarterback play as well. This is going to yeah. be really fucking fun for him. And if he yeah. has a big gear, he's on the market kind of right there in his prime, in the center of his prime. 
and they probably won't franchise tag him. That's where you want to be at. Yeah, he's just got. It's all about health with J.K. Yeah. He's got to be healthy, stay healthy, and have a good year. And I'm rooting for him. So I'm 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 excited for him. Did you see uh Robert Kraft? I guess warned Falcons owner. Yeah, that's a weird report because Robert Kraft denied it. The Falcons denied it. But the rumor is that he told um he told Arthur Blank, the owner of the Falcons, that Bill Belichick cannot be trusted. And now everyone's denied it since. But like, how does that rumor start then? Yeah. Like, who just makes that up? It seems like it seems like something that you would never even think is possible, remember, right? They were like set to hire him. He was like the the favorite yeah. at one point to be their it next head weird. coach, and then it just happened. But I guess Bill Belichick has let people know that he is interested in the Cowboys, Eagles, and Giants jobs. He just wants to play in the NFC East. He must see food out there because <laughs> holy shit! <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, outside of the Giants, I mean. The Cowboys job would be awesome, except he has to deal with Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. And that's been a pain in the ass for a lot of big time coaches. Um, the Eagles job, they're loaded. Why the, who the fuck would doesn't want that job? And the Giants job, I'm out. But apparently he's not. Must love the Northeast. This is on some draft coverage shit. And I saw you quote tweet this. And there's a report out that A.D. Mitchell is almost uncoachable. And his issue in blood sugar, a scout told Bob McGinn. You're going to have to assign somebody to be next to him for his first few years because his issues are all about diabetes and his blood sugar. Uh, two things about this. One, I didn't know he was diabetic, and that's a real thing. Like di yeah. diabetics, when their blood sugar's low, and like they have they, the is roller coaster. Mark, is it Mark Andrews? Yeah, Mark Andrews is a diabetic, and, and you have to be a fucking grown up. I mean, a grown man to, to monitor it and all the shit you have to do. I mean, I can't even fathom that being life every day. But, and so that might be true. And when, when diabetics get low blood sugar, they can get outlandish because they're fucked up, right? They don't, their, their blood's fucked up. All that can be true. I think it's so Bush league and so fucking classless for anyone to put this out there though. I do. So the kid's a diabetic. Let's make fun of them. Like, what is that? The, the teams already know this. Like everyone, it's fine. Teams know it. They, you know, they, they talk to doctors. They know what the, the deal is. ML football can fuck all the way off. Why do you have to put this kid on blast like this? Because he's a diabetic? Like, classless fucking, it's a joke. Yeah, the uncoachable part, too, kind of bugged me. Yeah, and and again, it might be true. But who are you to put it out there? I mean, he didn't sound uncoachable when Kirby Smart talked about him. Didn't sound uncoachable when Sark talked about him. Yeah. So I guess I... Seemed to work well at Texas. Maybe you should just find out what Sark did and do that. Yeah, like bro, bro went back to back at Georgia. Like, yeah, can we can we be for real here for a, a quick sec? I do want to ask you who would you draft first, AD Mitchell or Brian Thomas? I mean, I'm not taking this report into account. I think yeah, both, I think yeah. both. Um, I think I'll take Brian Thomas with a slight edge, but I think they're both they both have a great chance of being NFL receivers, like good ones too. Yeah, honestly, you. I don't. I think both those guys are number one potential yeah i do too like if i am anybody in the second round near the top of the second round i'm giving both those guys a hard hard look if absolutely there. i'm really high on ad mitchell i mean these are both guys zach it, it doesn't i don't know why <laughs> this year the combine didn't get as much kind of but I, mean, I do know why because xavier worthy broke the broke the record yeah Dog, both these guys at six over six four both ran sub four fours and they both have shown that they're good route runners and good with their hands yeah i i like both of them ton of potential here's another question for you braylon allen or blake corum mm. um i think braylon allen he, okay he, he just gives you a more complete back i i've talked about blake corum i think he's really good at what he's good at right his his, his short bursts his vision his agility, like change of direction. I don't think he has the top end speed. And I, I don't think he's a home run back, which when you're talking about the NFL, home run backs, it's not like they're taking it 60, right? Home run backs mean you're going to get a 15 yard run. Yeah. Guys that aren't home run backs, that shit closes too fast. You're getting seven or eight instead yeah. of 15. Like, are you explosive enough to explode through a hole? Right. Right. Absolutely. And that's and that's kind of one of the things. And also, I, I take age in, into account, and the knee injuries from Blake Corum worry me because he's a fifth year guy, I believe as well. Yeah, um, Braylon Allen, Zach, supposed to be going into his junior year. He's not supposed to be draft eligible. Right. He's young as shit, but he reclassified and as a fucking seventeen year old, ran for two two thousand yards in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. Think about how absurd that is. Stupid. 
Um, we have Prime talking about Kermani McLean, which I, th- I found interesting. Usually when guys hit the portal, we don't get the jabs back and forth. But I do want to play this video and then get your thoughts on Yeah, this. let's play it. I wanted to ask you about Cormani, Coach. He obviously yeah. entered the portal. Just is there anything that you could share about the situation? Yeah, right yeah. We, 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 uh, I'm always in prayer for our young men, and I want the best for them. And I, I pray to God that that he goes to a program that challenges him as well as hold him accountable and develop him as a young man. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't the program that can accomplish that. So prayerfully that he understands that this is the second go round and get it, go get it, man, because he has a tremendous amount of talent, uh, but he has to want it. Yeah. I mean, did coach speak, the kid didn't like getting coached hard and getting held accountable. So he's leaving. And so prime's basically saying, I hope wherever he goes, tries to do what we try to do. And he actually does it this time. He listens. I remember, um, Prime getting up there and say Kermani put what, the least amount of hours on the film thing. Oh, yeah. Um, I know there was some talk about maybe he's not taking school seriously. A couple people reached out to me, um, and, and kind of the rumors and the grumblings are that he might have to go to JUCO for a year. Mm, the um, grades weren't right. Yeah, the, the grades the grades were not right. So, I you know, it's funny because usually we don't hear coaches kind of elaborate on past players, right? Right. Guys that transfer. I found it interesting, but, um, you know, just uh, an, intri- <laughs> an intriguing moment. And I'm and i I'm curious to see what Cormani looks like in two years. Because yeah. he's always been a little bit of a project. But he's the number one corner in the country. He's talented as hell. Clearly, he's got to get his fucking – he's got to become a pro. And when he played against USC, he played really fucking well. Yeah, he's talented as shit. Like, real sticky. So, we'll see. Obviously, you hope that this isn't another one of those, like, five-star guys that – we know is talented, but can't get the off the field stuff right. That's it. Because that's what it feels like to me right now. And I don't want to put that on a kid who just finished a freshman year. Well, and I will reference this every single time we talk about a five star coming in. Oh my God, he's going to start. It's like, relax. It takes more than just that talent to yeah. start at a major college football program. And Colorado is not a major college football program. So he had to play some because he's that talented. But by no means was he ready to be a college football player. Agreed. Zach, rank these coaches in terms of hot seat. Number one, having, wait, uh, yeah, rank them in terms of who has the hottest seat. We'll start at the bottom and go up. Sam Pittman, Billy Napier, Dave Aranda, Mario Cristobal. Well, I think, I think part of the hot seat is expectations at the school, right? Yeah. Like Florida and Miami are expecting whoever they hire to get them in the national conversation. I don't know that Arkansas and Baylor necessarily are. So a little bit lower expectations. I would say the hottest seat probably is Billy Napier, not only because of his lack of success, but because, I mean, there, there's a pretty solid expectation that it's going to be bad again this year. I, I, I love DJ Lagway. I think he will be a reason that Florida could turn it around, not this year as a freshman with that schedule, but eventually. I just don't know if Billy Napier will be there for it. And then I, I think Mario Cristobal's too. You, they, he has to show – Tra- solid trajectory. I think then after that, I would say probably. I mean, I I almost have them tied. Sam Pittman and Dave Aranda. I I think I thought that Arkansas was kind of close to firing Sam Pittman last year, but Dave Aranda has been one of the more disappointing coaching tenures we've seen <laughs> um, of the of the guys that were once hot names. Remember when he was at LSU, he was oh the, yeah, he was the hot name. And um, and obviously he replaced Matt Rule at Baylor. And since then, Matt Rule's been at a couple of different stops. And we haven't really heard or seen much from from uh, from Dave Aranda's team. They did get up to a hot start last year, but it seems like they kind of they kind of fizzled. And I'm wondering if there is going to be an expectation because they were so good under Matt Rule and he left and they didn't. It didn't. The, I think the one thing Dave Aranda has is that one good year he had. Right? They he won, does. He does. The they one won good the year. Sugar Bowl. They went 12 and two. It's obviously it was a complete disaster after that. It went six and seven in 2022, and let this past year went three and nine. So it's the trajectory is really shitty. But he has that one year that neither Sam Pittman, Mario Cristobal, or Billy Napier have. Right. Right. But it's year five. I mean, the, yeah, traje- saying, like, the trajectory sucks right now. Like, like it's year five. I would like to see at least two multiple 10 win seasons. Yeah. If that if that's fair, especially it's the Big 12. Well, and you just lost Texas and Oklahoma. Like, right. Now that seat's a little warm. Like, you should have been bubbling <laughs> to be the fucking team in the conference. Absolutely. And that's that has to be the mentality of Baylor. Mm-hmm. Like, we need to be, we need to rule the roost in the Big 12 because we just lost the two the two roosters. Um, do we have this year's Keon, Keon Coleman and Keandre Lambert Smith? He's visiting Auburn. 
um, on a <laughs> Thursday, keeping a close eye on this because last year the spring window, the spring move we had was Keon Coleman who came in. Yeah. Um, and obviously he was more productive at Michigan State than Keandre was at Penn State. Um, but he has also got a, a visit lined up to Texas A&M as well. Do you think Keandre Lambert-Smith is good enough to kind of take that leap? Does he have like the physical tools? And how much do you put his lack of explosive plays on a guy like Mike Yersich last year? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Mike Yersich was – was definitely a scapegoat for a lot of offensive woes in the throw game at Penn State. There's a reason why Ryan let him walk right out the fucking door, right? Because I don't, I think he's just an okay quarterback coach. I don't think he's really got it. He reminds me of Tim Beck a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't know that Ke- Keandre Lambert Smith is not Keon Coleman, but in this cycle, he is that role, right? He is that top receiver in the spring portal who might have a little something there, yeah, right? Keon problem. Coleman leaving Michigan State, everyone's like, okay, whatever. What do you have, 300 yards receiving? Like, he was completely underperformed, but a lot of that was because of quarterback play, Peyton Thorne, offensive play calling. Like, right. Do you remember how that whole thing went, bro? Remember oh, yeah. uh, remember Peyton Thorne was staying, and so Keon Coleman was like, I'm fucking out of here. And then, <laughs> and then Peyton, Peyton Thorne was like, I'm not staying. <laughs> right. You're like, you just lost the one good receiver we had. I, I mean – I'm out too. Yeah. And it's like, well, he left because of you and now you're leaving because he's not here. He never wanted to play with you. And then obviously Peyton Thorne ended up at Auburn and then Keon Coleman never considered Auburn. Right. It was not happening. So. Not happening. <laughs> I'm I'm interested to see where Lambert Smith goes, but I, I thought he would want to go to contender. Honestly, he needs to go to Florida State. That's where he should go. Like, go just embrace me and Keon Coleman from the Big Ten to Florida State. Just yeah. go. Go go to Florida State. They clearly know how to do it. <laughs> I found this fascinating. Kyle Ford, wide receiver from UCLA, has got a top six. He's got one year of eligibility left. He's 6'3", 220 pounds. His top six are USC, South Carolina, Wake Forest, Florida, Michigan, and Ohio State. That's wild to me. Yeah. Wild, and and not because not because he's not a good player, not because Ohio State wouldn't benefit from getting him, but you're going to come to Ohio State with the receivers they have on roster? Everyone else you mentioned. He'll walk in the door and he's pretty much guaranteed a starter, right? USC, Michigan, for sure. Florida, South Carolina, Wake Forest, absolutely. Ohio State, you're walking in and initially you're competing to be a two. And then if you crack the two deep, man, that is a fucking climb up a hill to replace the ones. And it's a lot of trust that they're going to rotate. Right. I, I I can't imagine that. that I, I, I would imagine that is like a, what a, what other school is a great place to be a wide out? He saw, he saw Marvin Harrison Jr. He's like, God, Ohio State. Let me see if they're interested. And he put him on his list. Yeah, I mean, but the other part of it is like, there's got to be at least. I mean, for him to put them on the list, and he's going to take a visit here. Chip Kelly might be co-signing him. Well, he is a former Chip Kelly player now, and Chip Kelly just went through 15 practices with the, the receivers they have at Ohio State. If Chip Kelly's going after this kid, he clearly thinks this kid is Tanner McAllister, right? Like he is. Good enough to play, and I'm not saying I'm not saying that's a good thing, but he's. I, I just hate Tanner. Bro. But I'm just saying, Jim Knowles came and said Tanner McAllister's better than what we got, and so he brought him over. Chip Kelly just went through a full spring ball, and he clearly he if if they recruit this kid, he's saying he's he will be one of the best three in the room. Yeah, it does. It does intrigue me. It makes me wonder if they want some veteran leadership because I don't know if you know this, Zach. They did offer Julian Fleming six figures to stay at Ohio State. He opted to go elsewhere, and now they're looking at a a guy that's going to be a senior to kind of be in that room. Makes you wonder. In the Brian Windhorst voice, why? 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 Hmm. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Um, Zach, we'll get a couple super chats and then get to break. We got to talk quarterbacks at Ohio State and mm-hmm. then uh, get on out of here. Griff, thank you for the five. Zach is right about SeaWorld roller coasters. Brother, they have one that looks like you're going to touch the sky. Dude, there, there's like five roller coasters and they're all badass. It's really, and I'm telling you, with, then with the SeaWorld, I, I co sign going to SeaWorld um, over almost anything else in Orlando. Like the shows with the dolphins and the fucking orcas, like they're just outstanding. And then if you, we did a dolphin experience where you got to fucking like meet a dolphin, play with a dolphin. It was cool as shit. And the roller coasters, fuck. Bro, I just, I just, the orca shit, I just can't go for it. Dude, it is insane to see an animal that size trained that well to do what they do, all the flips and shit. It is insane. I guess that's why I can't go for it, bro, because that's like the most dangerous animal in the world bro that's like a true apex predator like they yeah they fucking, and they're smart as shit they fucking kill great white sharks dog yeah they, they hunt in packs yeah like you imagine that oh shit a great uh, a killer whale 
Oh, not one. You got four of them motherfuckers hunting you. Yeah, dog. Not, <laughs> not going for it. Elks, thank you for the uh, two. LaShawn works with me. We watch the show every day. Gotcha. What up, LaShawn? Happy Black History Year, LaShawn. Well, that was an assumption of race. It was. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, I, I think Elks is cultured. There you go. And I, you know, I, I see it, and I and, and I've never met a I've never met a white Lashawn. And so, <laughs> me either. Uh, until I meet one, I'm gonna say, "Hey, my boy, my brother, I I know what that is. <laughs> I got you. I'm here, and I I see you. You feel me? TJ, thanks for the two. Four cubic feet per quarter cow. Eat beef. Plant sucks. I agree, but I like a good salad too. Salad. Justine's, I'm telling you, Justine's the goat at making salads. Shit is fire. Bro, I'm not going to lie. I went out to eat with Pat's family. I was this close to ordering a salad, and I was like, I got to keep it up, dog. I'm, I'm a star. I'm a meat eater. <laughs> Big meat eater. No ditty. <laughs> so I went to chicken wings for my second time of the day and then just, like, picked at them. Sly, YouTube member, welcome to the gang. Appreciate you, Sly. Doug C., thanks for the five homesick today. Fuck Rona. Fuck my life. Don't fuck your life. Glad I get to catch a live show, though. Great work, fellas. Appreciate you, man. Hope you feel better soon. I feel better soon. Let's get a quick word for our partners and talk QBs. All right, we'll be right back after this. What makes this platform different from others outside of the fact we're unfiltered? And I actually worked in college football and might, might know a little bit about the sport and about the game is we open the doors and open the windows and let you inside under the hood in college football. And the best way to do that is our film breakdowns. If YouTube would let us put them out publicly, we would make it all free, but they dig us with a copyright every time. Bourbon and Balls, our off-season project. Every Tuesday night, I pick a bourbon, and at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we go live and do a live breakdown, interactive, you ask questions. It's all 22 coaches film, so it's not film you, you can see anywhere else. It's not TV copy. This is truly what coaches use, what I used for 15 years of coach of college football. And we break down a topic. We've done a Will full Will Howard breakdown, breaking down his game, what he was going to add to the Buckeyes. We did the Michigan National Championship game. There's over 200 game breakdowns in our library. If you want to learn college football at an, in an entirely different way, it's only 20 bucks a month. Or the best deal, if you want to do it, is you can lock it in right now with a 10% discount on patreon.com forward slash menace to sports and you can get a whole year's worth that'll include all next season when we break down up to five games a week we really give you the insight and information you need to be knowledgeable about college football because several times a, a, a sack will happen and you watch on tv you're like god this o-line sucks then you get the coaches film and watch and they block the five guys they were supposed to block the running back just released and was supposed to block a blitzing corner it was really on the running back but in your mind you think the o-line sucks it's always good to have quality information, and it's entertaining as shit. Drink a little bourbon, hang out with us all offseason, and then get ready for the 2024 college football season, possibly a nice little run for the Buckeyes. On Patreon, links in the bio. Come hang out with us. Come hang out with us, bourbon and ball, doing the 2014 Ohio State-Bama game next Tuesday. Come kick it with me. Got to come kick it. Um, let's get a couple of my, you know, let's talk quarterbacks right now. Ohio State, some 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 rumors, some grumblings. Our friends over there at Buckeye Scoop um, said that basically Ohio State has named their starting quarterback. Um, Will Howard, you know, was playing tennis with Ryan Day at the country club. Just him, just the two of them. And that evening, the reports come out that he will be the starting quarterback at Ohio State. Competition over, done with, and that's why nobody hit the portal. Zach, where are you at? What do you think is going on behind closed doors? And would it be malpractice for Ryan Day to name a starting quarterback today? Uh, well, not if there's not if there's a clear gap between him and everyone else. I, I think if there's a clear gap, the players know. So name it, announce it. Like it, they already know. They already know he's the better, the best one. I don't think that's the case. Um, I, I absolutely don't think that's the case, not from what I've heard and, and who I've talked to. I think this is still an ongoing competition, and Will, Will Howard may have the upper hand right now. I still find that hard to believe, but he might, but this is not over yet, and he may be the starting quarterback. I think Buckeye Scoop gets shit right all the time. They have great sources, so it might that might be the end result, but it's just not over yet. That's mm -hmm. not the case yet. And based on what I watched on film, what I watched in the spring game, I don't think anyone's grabbed that job yet. I don't. I think this is far from over. 
Yeah, honestly, Buckeye Scoop's been really hot when it comes to Will Howard. It makes you think, like, damn, they're really well sourced. Um, there was that secret meeting in Dallas that wasn't supposed to come out that Buckeye Scoop had. Um, they got him to Columbus early. And and now, you know, the evening after Ryan and, and Will go play tennis, they named the starting quarterback. It makes you think, like, damn, like, they either talk to Will Howard, Devin Brown, or Roddy Larkin. They're talking <laughs> to somebody that's, yeah. like, really, really clued in and knows – um, and I doubt it's Ryan Day because Ryan Day treats everything like the CIA does, like oh, anything yeah. come out. So it could be either what Will Howard or Riley Larkin is, is the guy. And then both would be really big time sources if that's kind of the lane they go in. Um, I I think Devin Brown offers more upside. And my belief is this, Zach, there has to there is somebody in this quarterback room that is better than Avery Johnson. So that's why I've kind of been on this Devin Brown or Julian saying, um, you know, road for most of this thing. I think Will Howard's going to be a starting quarterback. I think there's a little bit too much at play. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, the million dollars and. Well, it's, it's hard. The, the playing, the playing, the fucking playing tennis with Ryan Day. I was like, oh, it's over. <laughs> like, like, he didn't play tennis with nobody. Not Justin, not CJ, nobody. I don't even know if Corey Dennis is going to go play tennis with Ryan Day. <laughs> I didn't even know Ryan Day played tennis, to be honest with you. Come but, on. Yeah, you did. He's from New Hampshire. <laughs> Come on, bro. That's like Shout the, out Kinsale right the there national, in the backyard. Just the national I told sport. you, I, hey, I'm going to set up surveillance cameras from now on. It's right behind my house. I already got him. I'll just give you the login. Just give me the login. <laughs> Here's reality. I think, in my opinion, if Will if Will Howard's going to be the starting quarterback, that needs to be because there's no question that Julian Sane is the most natural and gifted quarterback in the room. He's just young, freshman, going to make mistakes, not ready, and I don't know that he will be ready. But if Will Howard is the guy, I'm looking for a Trevor Lawrence type of situation. Week six, we, he, you know, Julian's getting in late in games. He's developing. He's learning. He's growing. He's you know he's getting experience. And mid season, you have a really, really good freshman quarterback. That's what I, I would think the, tr the the path has to be because I don't believe after breaking down several Kansas State games, watching the spring game, knowing what I know about spring football, I don't believe that Will Howard is the best, is, is, is the option that Ohio State should have. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think he could be good enough to win? Yes, because the, the roster is that good. The defense is that good. The skill around him in run game is going to be that good. What I saw from the offensive line in the spring game was incredible improvement in the run game. Incredible. I think they will be able to run the shit out of the ball with these two fucking backs and Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins. Can Will Howard do enough to win it all? Yes. with this On this team, could he do enough to win it all on a different team with maybe a little bit lesser of a defense or without the run game that Ohio State's going to have? Absolutely not. I don't think he adds anything other than a little bit of athleticism, so he's not going to take as many sacks as Kyle did. He's going to be able to run the football a little bit. And I think that immediately, you, you add that to last year's team, they're may, they're, they probably beat Michigan, they probably make the playoffs, and they might win it all. So I think that there's two conversations to have here. Is Will Howard going to be an NFL quarterback, which is what Ohio State should have in Ryan Day's system? No, my answer is no, he's not. Is he good enough to win it all? Yes, I think he is. But I also do not believe I would put a ton of money on the fact that this isn't over yet. This competition is not done. I hope you're right, dog. I know you do. I really do. That's what I truly believe. Erase all the names. I don't, I, from what I, what I heard all spring, I mean, practice reports, talking to people I talked to and watching the spring game, that, that's not a competition that's over. Mm -hmm. well, that, that's what's, that's what's, it's mind fucking me, bro. Cause like, I've heard that like Devin's been better all spring. I've heard like, and I, and I, and I've gone, I've gone outside our circle for the first time in a long time. You know that. And like done a lot of listening to like Buckeye talk over there at cleveland.com. They've said the same thing. Devin's been better, but no one wants to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And then I just keep coming back to like the Will Howard, the million dollars, it's 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 a weird time in college it's football. It's so fucking weird with, with the NIL and transfer portal. Because think about it: you give a guy a million dollars, you got to give him that kind of money to get him out of, out of the portal because other people are throwing money at him like that. Now you have a millionaire sitting in the room, mm -hmm. getting paid far more than anyone else. That's a lot of Buckeye money sunk into a kid, and for him not to be the starter, that's a that's that's a bad investment for a lot of people that donated to your team. Yeah, because then, like, how do you go back to those people the right. next year? Like, hey, I need a million dollars for this. It's like, for what? Is he going to play? Yeah, like, right. is he good? And that's where I think the error is. The yeah. error was giving Will Howard a million dollars. Which, which is so much. And you know, you know, it's, you know, it's going to come back. It's, it, I, you know, it's funny because Zach will say stuff and then it won't come out. But I'll just go ahead and say it. 
Miami might have fucked us on this one because the only school offering a million dollars for Will Howard was Miami. Yep. And they were waiting to see what Cam Ward would do before they would give that. And that's the offer that he was shopping around. Yeah. And when that comes out in five or ten years, it's going to be like, oh, my. If, if they don't win the title, it's going to be like, oh, my God. Because that's what happens, right? Kid enter, a kid enters the portal with a little bit of lure. Like, you think maybe, oh, coming from Kansas State, imagine what he could do with better players, better mm -hmm. athletes, better pass pro. And I'm of that opinion. He, he will be a better version of himself in Columbus than he was in Manhattan, Kansas. But once that market is set, now what do you do? You, you have a goal, a, an objective, to bring in a quarterback that will at least compete for the job. And another school has that same goal. From Miami, it was like, oh, shit, we need a quarterback, period. Yeah. Not even compete for it. We need a guy to take the job. So that's, I mean, they have a high priority on landing that quarterback. And so they offer Will Howard a million dollars. And now you're Ohio State, like, all right, if we don't match, we're going to have an empty hand at the end of this thing. So they have to match. Well, now you got a lot of money, a lot of invested money into a kid. He clearly is going to have an edge before they even step on the field because you're paying him that much. It's like art, bro. Like if I buy an expensive piece of art, really expensive and my little brother draws something that's just as pretty i'm sorry but they're they both might get hung up but i gotta hang the expensive art up yeah like i have to um and, that, and that's i think that's i think that's my concern that's why that's why today i think it's over and because from everything we heard everything i heard i'll just i'll, I'll fall on the sword that i think Devin was better but i think Will may have been given that job to keep him here because they still want to play this and, thing out. And uh, yes, does that make sense? I, I, I don't think he was given the job, but he okay. might have been told he is the leading candidate for the job, like mm -hmm. he's winning the job. And part of that could be politics just to keep him out of the portal. I, I think we're going to find out reality in August. That's what we're going to find out reality. And maybe it will be him. I think that's still a, a very, very possible scenario because of what I said about the roster, because of what do they actually need to win? What did they need last year to win? All they needed was a kid that competes mm -hmm. and has a little bit of athleticism to make the offensive line look better, not take the sacks, no intentional groundings, like toughness. Will Howard brings that. And he's going to scramble for some yards. Last year's team is much better with Will Howard on it. Yeah. What do you make of a, a lot of the, the beat writers talking about they heard in the spring that Devin was better, but he's had more time here to be comfortable, so he should be better? Is that is that a valid point, or would you think that the guy that's been playing football for five years at the college level should I mean, at some it, point be better? I mean, it, honestly, you bring in a transfer quarterback that was a starter that's a veteran guy, but he couldn't learn the plays in four months? Like, what's the reason for that? He sp had to spend all waking hours studying and learning the playbook and getting up to speed. And throwing with receivers, like, I don't buy that at all. Now, if you told me a freshman, absolutely. But this kid was a starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. Now, is Devin slightly more comfortable? Sure, probably. But by the end of spring, the comfort level should at least be equal. Yeah. Who do you think has higher upside, Will Howard or Devin Brown? I, I still haven't seen it from Devin Brown. I've heard about Devin Brown from obvious, from coaches at Ohio State, from coaches that I know that went and watched spring this year. I've heard a lot about what he does and what he can do. He's a little, little trigger shy this spring. But other than that, he the, the pecking order was very, very clear to me through two scrimmages. Julian saying the most polished, best, pure quarterback on the roster. Devin Brown, probably the best option for the year. Will Howard struggles, but is what I said he is. He still might give him the best chance to win. That's where those three are at. I guess I the reason I always say upside with Devin Brown is because he has the strongest arm on the team. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's so I tend to think, okay, like that'll open. But like when you are able to open up your offense and do shit down the field, I always lean to upside on on that front. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Julian Sand, I think obviously we can all agree is fucking uber talented. Yeah, like but if, he showed us in the spring game, he's not quite there. Yeah, and I think in five years you're gonna look back and say the most the best quarterback in that room was Julian Sand. He was just a freshman. Yeah, he was just young, which is okay. Yeah. And honestly, like at Ohio State you have failed the room if you're starting a true freshman quarterback. Absolutely. And that is always the case. So, um, you know, gen generally generally speaking, it's like, is there a quarterback in this room that's better than Avery Johnson? And if the answer is no, I'm looking at Ryan Day a little funny, Yeah, I guess. Is that is that fair? Yeah. And I guess that's why I hold on to it because it is, it, is, it is about the standard of this room. Yeah.
Um, one is super chat, Zach, and then get us on out of here. Sly, member, you're a legend. Oh, I've already read that one. Um, Keel, yes. thanks for the two. Christian Kirk's highlights were unreal. Didn't you have a chance for him? I did. I probably could have got him. I fucked that up. That's one of my biggest regrets. John, thanks for the five. I love DB33, but if you haven't showed it by year three, unlikely that it's there. I don't disagree. Huh. But I do. I disagree when it comes to quarterbacks. Well, I mean, we've seen examples of kids later in their career popping, but usually, and, and keep in mind, year three's just started. I was like, about to say, like, we, he's been, he, like, this was his redshirt freshman year. Like, that's like saying, like, oh, well, we hadn't seen it from Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. And he got his start as a, like, he started as a redshirt sophomore and went fucking crazy. Like, Joe Burrow, we hadn't seen it. Fuck, it was, it was year four and we hadn't uh, seen it. Not even year five. Yeah. yeah. I mean, year well, four was, well, was, I'm saying year four and we hadn't seen it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think with other positions, that might be the case, but I, I, I disagree when it comes to, uh, Comes there's, there's examples of, of when that is not true, but generally by your third year, and I'm talking like August, like fall of your third year, you either see that it, it, it's, it, it has happened, it's going to happen, or it can happen, right? Yeah. One of those three has to be true. Yeah, I just I think with quarterbacks, they're in such a unique spot because there's only one of them on the field. Like with Mac yeah. Jones, we hadn't seen it, and no. then boom, we saw we it. We as fans. Yeah. We I'm as, saying the coaches, like Joe Burrow, before he transferred, we saw it. Like this kid might be really fucking good. He's just not yet. Like yeah. you and, and I'd argue that I think that I mean, at least the players that I've talked to have seen that from Devin. I mean, shit, we heard the cotton bowl stuff. Yeah. Sly, thank you for the 10. Scoop yesterday comparing Will Howard's productivity with Kansas State to JT Barrett at Ohio State. Can we please stop acting like Bill Howard is elite? He was the fifth or sixth best quarterback in the Big 12. Yes. Yeah, Will, Will Howard's not elite. No. I mean, ever, he just, he's lost his job too many times for me to feel comfortable with it. Like, yeah. I'm talking about during season. And again, if you're Ohio State, why do you not have a quarterback on roster better than Avery Johnson? Right. Speed, thanks for the two. Make something for Menace to Sports Shit with Willie B. I hope OH. Will be fire. Okay. My bad. I can't read. <laughs> Coach Zach, thanks for the two. Diabetes, though. Silly season on full That's swing. That's what I mean. Oh, the kid has low iron. Let's blast him. Like, what yeah. the fuck? Let's, okay. run a, let's run a report. We weird flex. Uh, South Carolina Buckeye, thank you for the five. If you have a question, just let us know and ask. Keel, thanks for the two. Talking without putting money up is bitch energy. Is the chat popping off? I haven't seen anything going on in there. It there's might some, be. There's some wild shit going on. There. Is there there's some always wild, some wild shit going on. There's some wild shit going on in there. Our people the email is all I keep seeing. Oh, wow. The chat's beefy. Y'all be better than that, man. <laughs> Uh, have better. at it. Yeah, have Rod, at it. Fuck it. Rod Farber said in the chat today, he said he, sometimes he feels like people get so distracted arguing in the chat that they don't um, <laughs> that they don't listen to the show. <laughs> they just be arguing about what the fuck ever. I love it. Keep that yeah. chat popping. Let me know. What are y'all arguing about? Sean, thanks for the 10. Why can Notre Dame have Joe Alt and Blake Fisher in the same draft and generally have elite offensive I mean offensive linemen? Meanwhile, Ohio State has mediocre recruits and O-line play. Fry better get that shit figured the fuck out. Woo. Yeah, I'm with you. Wait, it was Joe Alt ranked. Let's let's find out. Great job identifying, recruiting, and developing. That's yeah. how they do it. Yeah, Joe Alt was outside the top 150 as a recruit, so we have a couple of those on the team. That's so that's know. identification right there. They identified he was better than his ranking that he would, and and they developed the shit out of him and coached him. And I agree, Ohio State should have that. They should, and I just the recruiting thing. Okay, Blake Fisher was a top 100 player, good player, number number four tackle in the country. Um, team, thanks for the two. We need sketch versus Chris and Madden. Oh, I'm, that not, would... I'm not ready for that, dog. No, that, who gives a fuck? If we can get make that happen, we're making that happen. I'll reach out, and it's I'll Chris with a K. Up. Yeah, thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you, brother. <laughs> thank you, brother. Go Blue as Bula. Thanks for the two. What do you want to see the most in the University of Michigan spring game? I want to see Alex Orgy throw the ball. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to watch the defense and see truly what the impact is of, of the kids that left. But mo the most important thing in Michigan right now is can Alex Orgy give you what JJ gave you, right? Which is not, we're not, we're not asking a lot out of him, is it? Michigan fans and Michigan coaches, but can he do that? Because I still haven't seen him throw a pass. 
Yeah, I want to see that, and then I'm, I'm interested to see what Tony Alford wears. <laughs> <laughs> and if the broadcast goes and talks to him, because I think that's nationally televised too. Yeah. So that'll that'll be interesting. Um, Sharon Moore, man. What a time. What a time. I just hope he doesn't cry. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Rose, thanks for the two. Auburn fans starting to say 19 LSU if Lambert commits. <laughs> okay. Christ. That's a that's a leap. No, they're not. <laughs> Roger, thanks for the two. Zach and Chris, does Devin beat Maryland in 2023? OH. I owe. I think so. Because I, I mean I think he's been in the common court. So yeah. So yes. I think Devin beats everyone Kyle beat, and then who knows about Michigan? Mm-hmm. Maybe not. Who knows? Michigan Spring Game live noon on Saturday on Fox. Yeah, national, national televised game. That'll be cool. I want to, want to see what the receivers look like too, and I, and I want to see the is the uh, Michigan fans. Let me know is the Jordan Marshall kid early enrolled. I'd like to see him and compare him to Sam Williams Dixon, the Ohio yeah. State freshman. Both. From oh, this Ohio. is cool. If you want to go up to the Spring Game, they play Ohio State Friday night in baseball. Oh wow! Okay, a little baseball action here for it. Kyle B, thanks for the five. Did they know Saiyan was coming when going after Howard? No. No. Because remember, Saiyan came after uh, after Saban retired. Yeah. And Will, so they met with Will Howard at a secret meeting in Dallas during that Cotton Bowl time. Mm-hmm. And the rumors are that's why they left a couple practices on the table because they were trying to orchestrate that, which I don't know what your thoughts are on that. I don't know. You could never leave practices on the table. That is, I mean, that's criminal. You miss an opportunity. I guess they what they said they missed four yeah i mean if nothing else for young guy development that's that's a crime yeah. that you lost that opportunity you can never get it back it does make it seem like that that combo was not serious at all oh what did you watch it uh, yeah it definitely yeah, wasn't serious it. we had the matadors out there playing offensive line and it was like to, brutal bro it's so crazy bro thinking back it looks disgusting to you have a first time quarterback and then you shuffle the entire offensive line <laughs> And then you ask a guy to be the center that hasn't snapped the ball all year. And you less you lost a top five draft pick at receiver too. Yeah. And then the and then you don't and then you leave practices on the table. Wow. I don't know. That's that's nuts. Dylan, thanks for the five. How do you think 2023 Ohio State's record would have been with Will Howard instead of Kyle McCord? Also, any word on Chip Kelly swinging gate two part uh, two point conversions? Oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll that's see. I mean, that's a deep cut. That's that, good. that is a deep cut. That's um, it's always, I, it's, it's always a pain in the ass for a defense to have to deal with that shit. Um, it just forces them to practice it in practice, and that you're taking away practice time. That's why most teams do it. And if a team doesn't, you can find an edge and get an extra point. Um, but I, I think last year's Buckeye team with Will Howard, they have a better chance to beat Michigan. And if they beat Michigan, I think they got a, a real good shot of winning it all. And that's what we're talking about here, right? And now compare the talent composite from last year's Buckeye team to this one. Outside of losing Marv, it went up everywhere. Also, like the talent, the talent, um, the blue chip ratio, talent ratio in the wide receiver room is actually higher without Marv. Now, yeah, you know, it is because uh, because the starters will be Jeremiah Smith, who was the number one player in the country, and you lost Marv and you lost Julian Fleming. Right. So, addition by subtraction. In a conglomerate. Wild world. I mean, there's going to be, what, three, five stars across. Um, What was the other thing? Oh, here's my thing about Will Howard. I like Will Howard. I think he can play. I think he can win Natty at Ohio State. And people like to reference that Texas game where he threw four touchdowns and then mm-hmm. one interception. It's like, look what he did against the Big 12 champion. And my thing is, I'll, I'll just play devil's advocate. Then you look what he did against the the Big Ten, the Big 12 runner-up. Because mm-hmm. against Oklahoma State, he threw that game away. So I think there's like this idea that he's some like hyper-consistent, really steady quarterback. When he has the games, when he starts bleeding, he cannot stop bleeding. Yeah. Um, and that, that's what freaks me out about him. I mean, it just it, it, Oklahoma State played like dog shit. We didn't break that film down. 15 to 34, 44% completion percentage, 152 yards at 4.5 yards per attempt, one touchdown and three interceptions. That was his low point on the year. And then Texas Tech was obviously when he got benched, right? And well, that and that Oklahoma State game, that Oklahoma State team, the other part of it is they were bad defensively. Yeah. So like for them to do that. So they did that. And you know what Quinn Ewers did against that same defense? Probably went nuclear. Bro, he broke every one of his single game records. Yeah. Every PR. He bro in the gym was benching 500 pounds against that team. Yeah. Like what happened crazy. was the Will Howard allure is because his best game was against the best team they played, right? Right. Against Texas, 41 pass attempts, 64% completion percentage, was the only game he went over 300 yards, four touchdowns and one interception. That's the whole – and we broke it down. It 
I'm telling you right now, go watch the old bourbon and ball episode from two weeks ago. It wasn't a dominant performance yeah. by any stretch of the matter. At halftime, I'm sitting there on stream sipping my bourbon going, when the fuck is he going to start actually airing it out? Like completing balls and like scoring touchdowns. So we got really hot for a half. Yeah. Which is wild that, you know, most talented Ohio State team in the last five or six years, we're betting it on. Guy that got hot for a half. <laughs> Guy that got hot for a half. Speed, thanks for the two. Burrow would have started, but got hurt in fall camp. Yeah, spring, actually, but yeah. Rose, thanks for the five. Buy or sell? Day makes Will Howard into Sean Clifford. <laughs> Day makes Cam Ward into Jaden Daniels. Hmm. I don't know if Cam Ward is that good. I think Cam Ward's good as fuck. I think he's really good, but I, I don't know he's if he's just, that good. You're I talking about Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah, uh, he's, not, he's not that good, but I think he definitely turns him into – shit, I think if Cam Ward comes as he is, he would have been fucking great at Ohio State. Probably. The fuck I, go That's the, I mean, you look at this quarterback position. There's two, two opportunities where Ohio State failed. That was keeping Quinn Ewers happy and keeping him a Buckeye and then not getting Cam Ward out of this portal. Those are the two, two things that at the end of this year, if it doesn't go well, you're going to look back and say, fuck, if we just got one of those two right, Whole different story. Uh, South Carolina Buckeye, thanks for the two. Hey, boys, love the show. Growing the base here. We appreciate you. All you got to do is be a friend, tell a friend, as Pat McAfee says. Grab the link from the show, send it in a group chat, tweet it out, post it on Facebook. Give us a little raving review and get your, your network to come watch us. We would appreciate it. If you like it. If you don't, tell me to fuck off. Don't post it anywhere. Or tell people, don't watch that show. It sucks. I don't care. Keel, thanks for the two. Remember, Keel, Jason licks windows with his chin strap helmet. Okay, it's getting out of bounds right it's now. It's getting out of control in the chat, as it always does. We appreciate you. What the beef is between Jason and Keel, but Keel is going. Willie, thanks for the 10. Remember, Willie, I sell freezer beef also. Let me know how to contact you. Chris at Menace to Sports. Or Zach, Z-A-C-H, at Menace to Sports. You already got your freezer beef. Yeah, bro. but I might want more. Okay. I mean, maybe. Or, we, Pat. Yeah, or yeah. Pat. Oh, we, Pat likes to eat, too. You know what? If you sell it, if you send it to team, T E A M at menace it goes to everybody. Okay. That's good. Everybody eats. Everybody eats. Speed, thanks for the two more. Naming my next kid LaShawn to break, break Chris's stereotype. Hey, don't talk about it. Be about it. <laughs> you won't. You won't. You won't. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> Jeremy, thanks for the two. Two G's because you're good. Okay. <laughs> Fuck Greg with three G's. Yeah, that's nuts. Keel, here we go. Still cooking. Um, thanks for the two. Malachi totes rusty 22s cal high points. <laughs> rusty 22 caliber high points is crazy. <laughs> yeah, y'all are crazy. Y'all are insane. And here we go. Rod, thanks for coming. YouTube member, my guy. Legends. Appreciate so. you, Rod. Um, Zach, final call today. Who's going to be a starting quarterback at Ohio State? I'm not calling it. I mean, I said it on the live show after a couple drinks. I would pick Devin, Devin Brown. That's who I would prefer. I think he, he gives you – he will give you the best chance at better performance at the quarterback position this year. But I don't disagree with picking the guy who's going to – who has the best chance to win you a title. And they might not be the same guy. But That's, I, and that's insane to think about. It though. is. It is. And so I, I'm – I'm right where I think Ryan Day actually is, not in political conversations. I, I feel like him and I are on the same page right now, and that is this bitch is not over. We'll see how they go, see how they, they, they kill the summer, see how much they improve, and we'll go into training camp and we'll find ourselves find ourselves a quarterback. And, we'll, and let's make that call quick and get that son bitch ready to go win a title. But I don't, I'm not ready to say who it is because I don't think Ryan knows. So if Ryan doesn't know, no one knows. I think it's Bill the Thrill, million-dollar bill. The billionaire. It might be. Yeah, I, I, I think it is. But um, I'm, I'm hoping it is a real competition, and the chat is getting crazy, bro. I just saw somebody say, you got my hometown nigga, pull up and meet God. Hey, Damn. they're going – hey, yeah, hey. chill out, y'all. We don't promote violence. Yeah, yeah, chill out, y'all. I just saw that. Let's. Uh, if they let's, meet God, we lose a listener. Don't fucking do that. Right, keep all <laughs> listeners here. Nice um, little thirsty Thursday for you. We got a freaky Friday coming tomorrow, and then it's off to the freaking weekend, as R. Kelly said, one of our favorites. <laughs> it's the freaking weekend about to have me some fun we're out of here we appreciate you menace army